your praise our hearts will cry these bones will sing great are you lord sing all the air and no Praise to be praised. Praise to be praised. 
to be praised. Father, we praise you. Oh, come on, worship him. Bless him, church. Come on, give him a clap offering. Give him a shout. Give him a wave. Hallelujah. Father, we worship you, oh God. Worship you for me. Sing for all, for all the things you've done for me. No one can worship you for me. Sing, here's my worship. Here's my worship. All of my worship. All of my worship. Receive my worship, all of my worship. Sing you, Lord, you are worthy, and no one can worship you. For no one can worship you for me, for all that you have done, for all that things you've done for me father no one can worship you for me no one can worship you for me sing here is my worship all of my worship my worship lord receive my
my hallelujah belongs to you. Sing my hallelujah, my hallelujah belongs to Can we appreciate the Lord today? He is good. He is so good. He is so good. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Good morning, church. Hope everybody is enjoying the service so far. It's now time for our prayer for revival, our prayer for the nation. And as we push in deep to pray for revival, more than any other time in our lives, we need to be in alignment with God. We must persist in prayer, but alongside this, our actions need to be aligned with God. Also, as the Bible tells us, faith without works is dead. We need to be praying and believing God for the change we want to see, but we also need to be the change we want to see. The world that we're believing that God will revive needs to see what that looks like in us, in you, and in me. And they need to see that right now. Our scripture today comes from Psalm 1, verses 1 and 2 in the Amplified Version. Verse 1 tells us, Blessed fortunate, prosperous, and favored by God is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, following their advice and example, nor standing in the path of sinners, nor sit down to rest in the seat of scoffers and ridiculers. Indeed, the Bible tells us that we are blessed when we avoid such behaviors. But when we hear such words as wicked, sinners, scoffers, and ridiculers, most of us will think of others in that way before we think of ourselves. We may look out into the world and petition God to change the actions, the hearts, and behavior of others. But oftentimes, that evil is a lot more closer to home. It's in our own actions, our own words, behaviors, and can be found in traits such as bad attitudes, pride, impatience, gossip, lack of self-control, unforgiveness, a quick temper, vain competition, and impure thoughts, and the list goes on. For some of us, these things have crept up and become embedded bad habits and default modes in our lives, but we can't afford for this to be our norm. Not, one, not when God has called us to be the salt and the light on this earth. Not when we are supposed to be his representatives here on earth. We've been set apart for him, not to be used by the enemy. But in our own strength, we keep on failing. But verse 2 of Psalm 1 says, But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And on his law, his precepts and teachings, he, habit he, sorry, he habitually meditates day and night. You may find a connection with the less time you spend in intimacy with God and the more the world gets a hold of you. More than ever before, we need to be reading, meditating, studying, and confessing the word daily so that that, so that that remains our truth, our lifestyle, our reality, and the fruits that we produce. And we need for the world to see that in us. So let us pray now. Let us pray with all our heart, all our mind, and all our soul. Let's petition God for a desperate desire, a desperate hunger and thirst for his word, that we will meditate on it day and night, and it will grip our hearts and be at the center of everything that we do. So can we pray now? Can we lift up our voices in prayer? Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus, give us a thirst and a hunger for your word, Father Lord God. So we walk, Father Lord God, in the way that you want us to walk, Father Lord God. So the world will see that bright light, your light shining for us, Father Lord God. So that the world will see you in us, Father Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus, Father Lord God. 
that that bright light, Father Lord God, will be intoxicating, Father Lord God. It will be infectious, Father Lord God, for the world, in our workplaces, in our homes, Father Lord God, in our neighborhoods, wherever we are, Father Lord God. Father, we're asking, Father Lord God, for us to have that hunger, Father Lord God, for an understanding, for the Holy Spirit to be in us, to give us an understanding of the word, to give us insights of what, how to live, how to live our lives, how to walk, how to be, how to treat others, how to be a light in this world in the mighty name of Jesus. So we can resist the enemy and we can resist his schemes, Father Lord God, and so that we always point to you in our actions, in our words. Let, us, let the word, let the word of God always be in our mouth. Let the word of God, let us sit and study and meditate. Let us teach our children let us share with our friends, with our neighbours, with our work colleagues the truth, the truth, the truth of God so this land can be revived. People can see revival in us. Let our own lives be revived. Let our habits be revived in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. I'm still in that same attitude. I'm going to be leading us this morning in praying for the persecuted church all over the world. Um, I think records show that daily thousands of Christians are killed for the sake of their faith. And I read something this morning that I wanted to just read to us as church. It says that whilst it is a privilege for us to worship God freely in our own environment, we must never forget as Christians that there's so many of our brothers and sisters that are going through the bloodshed and who risk losing their lives for the sake of their faith. And we must never turn a blind eye to what they're going through because if we do that, then we may be at risk of losing our hearts for what God can truly do. And this morning as family, I want us to stand together with our brothers and our sisters all over the world who are at risk of really losing their lives for the sake of what they stand for. I'm going to take us through two scriptures very quickly. The first one is Ephesians 6 verses 19 to 20. And this is Paul's letter to the Ephesians where he says, And for me, that utterance may be given to me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains. I want us to begin to pray for the persecuted church all over the world, asking for God's grace, that no matter what they might be going through, there will be the grace of God upon their lives to speak the words of God and the right words with boldness in the name of Jesus. Church, let's begin to pray. This is a privilege that we do not take for granted, but not everyone has that privilege. And I want us to stand together with our brothers and sisters all over the world right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you, O oh God. We thank you for your hand upon your church, O oh God. Father, we thank you, O oh God, for your grace, O oh God, for your boldness that rests upon our brothers and our sisters, O oh God, so that they can rightly speak your word, O oh God, in truth, O oh God, not being afraid despite what they might be going through. Father, we ask, O oh God, that you, the God of all peace, would cause them, O oh God, to find peace, O oh God, in your grace, O oh God, knowing and remembering, O oh God, that your grace is sufficient for them, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. And the second scripture I want to read is Acts 16, verse 34. It says, Now when he had brought them into his house, he set food before them and he rejoiced, having believed God with all of his household. Now this account was about the keeper of the prison, you know, um, Paul and Silas's prison. And the Bible records that because of the witness of God that they brought forth, he came to himself and his household came to believe God and he testified about God. So right now we're going to pray. We're going to pray that through the witness of the persecuted church, through the witness of our brothers and our sisters, that it would inspire those that persecute them to come to the saving knowledge of Christ in the name of Jesus. Let's begin to declare that boldly in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you, O oh God. We thank you for your hand upon our brothers and our sisters, that through the boldness, O oh God, that you give them, O oh God, that that witness, O oh God, inspires even those that want to bring harm to them, O oh God, to come to you. Father, because you can turn the hearts of anyone 
in any way that you want to, oh God. So we ask for a change of heart, oh God. We ask that you do that which only you can do. Father, we speak your word. We speak your word, oh God. We decree and declare that every word that you have spoken concerning these faithful ones will not go back to you void. It will go forth and do exactly what you have planned and purposed. We speak peace, oh God, into their lives. We speak courage, oh God, into their lives. We speak boldness, oh God, into their lives. We speak hope, oh God, that does not make a shame, oh God, into their lives. We decree, oh God, even as your word has said, that we should say to the righteous that it is well with our brothers and our sisters. We thank you because you have spoken, oh God. And as a church, we say, Amen. Thank you, Lord. We give you all the glory, oh God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Please do take your seats as we listen to seven years. Hello and welcome to this week's Seven News. The Community Action Summer Fest is in full swing. We've got a couple of things up our sleeves just for you. We've got Football Academy, Axe Week, and just for the older people, we've got music and tea. Football Academy is open to anyone aged between 7 and 17 and it runs from the 23rd of July to the 3rd of August. It's a perfect opportunity to enjoy the sun and kick some ball around. A Call to Serve Acts Week takes place this year from the 13th to the 18th of August and it's a time when as a church we go out into our local community and we help vulnerable residents to do things that they cannot do themselves. We need volunteers to make this happen and we want you to get involved. To round up the summer events, on the 29th of August there will be a music and afternoon tea for older people. It's an opportunity for older people to get together, have a cup of tea, some cakes and some biscuits. Now there are deadlines for registration for these events. The deadline for Football Academy is today, so please register today. The deadline for registering for Axe Week is the 12th of August and the deadline for the music and afternoon tea is on the 26th of August. On Saturday the 28th of July at 10 o'clock in the youth room, we're having an event which is being run by If Jesus Taught at Harvard Business School and it's themed the global relevance of a Christian. This event will talk about how we can leave a global spiritual footprint in whatever area we operate in. Don't forget, it's on Saturday the 28th of July, 10 a.m. in the youth room. Be there. Quick reminder, if you would like to get involved in multimedia, now is your opportunity. The multimedia department is recruiting. If you're interested in getting involved in anything multimedia, please go to the foyer where you can sign up. We thank God for the successful prayer meeting, Let It Rain Nigeria, which took place in Lagos on the 25th of June, 2018. The momentum garnered during the Pursuit of God conference here was definitely felt in Nigeria as the Spirit of God prepared the way for us and made an impact on the lives of all those in attendance. The next Jesus House monthly prayer session takes place on Friday the 27th of July from 8pm to 11pm. It's an opportunity to get together and just pray. We've been through POG, we've set the foundation, let's now begin to build on that in prayer. Connect Group Summer Fest is going on right now. There's still a few dates left to put in your calendar, so if you haven't, please do watch this. We've launched, prayed together, studied together, and built stronger bonds across Greater London. Now it's time for the Connect Group Summer Fest. It's an opportunity for all our groups to hang out, have fun, and share the love of Christ in practical ways. There are four key dates to remember. 11th of July, we'll kick off our summer fest season with a Bible quiz and games night. Which group will win? You decide. 25th of July will be an evening of freedom and praise and worship to thank God for his numerous showers of blessings. Come and be blessed. 
8th of August will be a prayer walk to reclaim our streets for Jesus. This will be followed by refreshments. 22nd of August, we will end our summer fest season with a night at the movies, a cinema experience with popcorn, ice cream, drinks, the entire works. In between these dates, we encourage our members to hang out at the park for a picnic, perhaps visit the zoo to reflect on the works of God, or go to a theme park for those who are more adventurous. You decide what works best for your group and go for it. Get ready to have a fun-filled summer spreading God's love and deepening our relationships with one another. Spread the word, invite your friends, let's have fun together. That's it for this week's 7 News. Here's a recap of all the announcements. If you need any further information on anything that you've heard here today, please visit the Jesus House website where all the information is and you can watch 7 News again. Don't forget that Jesus House is social, so please follow us on all your social media channels. And don't just follow us, tweet, like, retweet, just get involved with us on social media. Our handle is at Jesus House UK. God bless you, have a great week. Praise the Lord. Amen. Go on, let's appreciate our Seven News team again for diligently, diligently bringing news. We appreciate their work. Amen. You know, in the first service, I, I, was, I asked a question that came out of re reflection this morning. It's exactly four weeks, a month, since when we finished the pursuit of God. And my question, ladies and gentlemen, and, and please, just if you answer truthfully, how many people still feel as they felt four weeks ago in terms of your fervency, your energy, your faith, your belief in God, you know, your excitement, your expectation after the pursuit of God? How many people still feel the same way? Four weeks? Four weeks? Okay. Now, just like the first service, Quite a number of hands were down, and it's understandable. It's understandable because um, I remember Smith Wigglesworth was the one who wrote and said that time is the enemy of faith. What that means, ladies and gentlemen, is that we have faith. We trust God, we believe God, but as time passes, our faith starts to wane. Is this correct for somebody? Now listen to what the word of God says, just to encourage us this morning. This was the word that came to me as we worship this morning. Romans chapter 4. And if we can read from the NLT version from verse 18, Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4. Okay, can I, can I ask you to read along with me? Can we do this together? One, two, three. Let's read. Go. Okay, let's start again. Let's read. It's the word of God. One, two, three, go. Even when there was no reason for hope, Abraham kept hoping, believing that he would become the father of many nations. For God had said to him, that's how many descendants you will have. 19. And Abraham's faith did not weaken, even though at about 100 years of age, he figured his body was as good as dead, and so was Sarah's womb. 20. Abraham never wavered in believing God's promise. In f Can you say that again? Can you say it one more time? In fact, his faith grew stronger, and in this he brought glory to God. 21. He was fully convinced that God is able to do whatever he promises and 22, and because of Abraham's faith, God counted him as righteous. Ladies and gentlemen, time is the enemy of faith. But time can never rub out God's word. Once God has spoken, ladies and gentlemen, the word says he's faithful to keep his word. You know, I was challenged this morning, I was driving to work, my sister was sitting next to me. She was vis visiting from Canada. And, and she said to me, she said, you know what? Every morning when I wake up, I expect that there will be a miracle. 
If it doesn't happen today, you know what? I wake up tomorrow and expect. How many people woke up this morning expecting that the word God spoke four weeks ago, six weeks ago, it will still come to pass in your life? Can I say to you something, some ladies and gentlemen? God is fully to be, sorry, God can be fully trusted to keep his word. Can you rise up to your feet? I need you to help me tell somebody that God can be trusted. He can be trusted to keep his word. Please let me tell somebody. Let me encourage somebody this morning. Encourage somebody this morning. And please let me tell someone, don't give up on God. Don't give up on God. Don't give up on God. Because God will never give up on you. He can be fully trusted, my brothers and my sisters. He can be fully trusted. That's the kind of God that we serve. Now, if you believe that, can somebody give glory to God this morning? Give, give glory. If you believe it, if you believe it, that God is able, able, able to do what he can do. He can do what he's able to do. Go on. Go on, go on, go on. You're, you're, you're saying with your clap that I trust you, oh God. Time, time might have passed. But you are God and God alone. You're faithful in all your ways. Because he won't give up. Oh, you're in it. Oh, we worship your God. You... Go on, can somebody tell God is able to do just what he said he would do. He's gonna fulfill every promise. Every promise, every promise. Thank you, everlasting Father. Lord, every word that you have spoken over this house, they will not return to you void, O oh God. Lord, you have spoken that it will rain. We trust you, O oh God. Our hope is in you, O oh God, that that rain will fall upon every life in this place. The rain will fall upon this church, O oh God. The rain will fall upon this nation to the glory of your name. Blessed be your holy name, O oh God. In Jesus' name, we have worship. Go on, can we give God a resounding clap of it? Remember, you're saying it might not have happened yesterday, but it will happen today. How many believe that it can happen today? If it doesn't happen today, it will happen tomorrow. That is the God that we serve. We bless you. We bless you, O oh God. Thank you. Thank you, O oh Lord our God. You may be seated in his wonderful presence. Amen. God is faithful. Ladies and gentlemen, we, um, um, I know he's not here because he's gone for the service that usually holds now in the View Cinema. But two days ago, on the 20th of July, Friday the 20th of July, it was Pastor Mark's 50th birthday. And uh, go on, we can celebrate him in, in absentia. In absentia. Um, and and let's, um, let's remember him in prayer. And then also let's encourage him when we see him and greet him. Um, nothing happened on Friday in that sense in terms of a celebration. But as a family, we can celebrate him when we see him. So please don't forget. And then tomorrow by the special grace of God, it will be uh, Siam's 50th birthday as well. I, 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 uh, um, you all know Siam, Pastor Phil's, Phil's wife. Pastor Phil has had to die, she's ministering somewhere. I'm not sure whether Siam is still around or not, um, but it's her 50th birthday as well tomorrow. So please, let's encourage her. Let's um, send text messages, phone calls. As, as much as let, let's just show our love tomorrow a amen but then today ladies and gentlemen is a special day you know i was saying in the first service that 
um, this lady was one of the first people that started this church in January, it was it January? It was January uh, 1994, 24 years ago. And for 24 years, she has not just been a member of the church, she has served in the leadership of this church, been supportive, poured herself, particularly in the last six years as she came on full time in the role that she plays. Um, and I could go on and on, apart from the personal relationships that we have. Ladies and gentlemen, today, the 22nd of July, is Pastor Chizo Akisoya's birthday. Happy birthday. Let's, let's pray for you. Come, come, come. Go and celebrate a wonderful child of God. Amen, amen. I'd like us to stretch out our hands to, to Pastor Chizo and to her better half, Pastor Bajo, as we better half. I have to tell you, those of you in second service, I told them first service, you know, every time I think about their marriage, I, I, I always remember the fateful day. How many years ago was it? How many years ago? How many years? Tell us now. Okay, many years ago. <laughs> I'll never forget, it, it's like yesterday, I was driving on Finchley, I still remember exactly where I was, just getting to the O2 on Finchley Road, and Chisa calls me, and she says, she calls me Best B. She, she says, Best B, you won't believe. I said, believe what? She said, you won't believe. Bajo says he wants to marry me. And then she says, never. <laughs> now you can see the never. Please appreciate her better half. God, can we stretch out our hands to Pastor Chiso and Pastor Baj and let's pray for them from the bottom of our hearts. Go on, from the bottom of our hearts. 24 years that she has served faithfully. And we're asking God to just remember her today, remember her today. We've just talked about a faithful God who does not forget, a, a faithful God who does not leave us, nor forsake us. Today, as she celebrates her birthday, we're asking God particularly that the windows of heaven will open over her life. That God will pour out his blessings upon her. To remember her husband, her faithful husband, Pastor Badge. To remember the children, Saj and Rina. And everything that God has committed into her hands. That even from today, whatever she lays her hands on, they will prosper in the mighty name of Jesus. Go on church, let, let, let's pray from the bottom of our hearts. From the bottom of our hearts. Oh God, oh God, remember your daughter. Remember your daughter, oh God. Let's just continue to pray for Pastor Jesus. Father, we just bless your holy name over her, oh God. Mariba Shika Tanda, Libra Kasete, Ribu Shaka Tanda, Rima Santa, Libra Kasundo, Libra Kasanda, Ribusa. Father, we just want to thank you for your daughter, oh God. We thank you, Father, Lord God Almighty, for being with her, oh God. Thank you for her strength. Thank you for love and joy, oh God, Father. Thank you, Father, Lord God Almighty, for how she is a role model, oh God. We bless your holy name holy name, O oh God. Thank you for her marriage. Thank you for her children, O oh God. Father, Lord God Almighty, we just ask, O oh God, that you continually be with her, O oh God. Strengthen her, O oh God. Pour new wine, O oh God, Father, into her life, O oh God, Father. Remember her for good, Almighty Father, Lord God. Remember, Father, all her sacrifices, O oh God. Father, we pray, O oh God, Father, that you will reward her, O oh God, Father, for all that she has sown, O oh God, Father, Lord God. Father, I pray that all her dreams, all her visions, O oh God, 
God, will come to fulfillment in the mighty name of Jesus. And Father, Lord God, her deep cries, oh God, her deepest cries, oh God, you will answer in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God. Bless her home, oh God. Bless her children. Bless her ministry, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you for your daughter, oh God. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Go on, let's appreciate our pastor, Chisa, as she goes. And can I, can I ask you, can you love her to beats today? Can, can you do that? You know, so go up to her after the service and squeeze her to almost death. Yeah, okay. Go on, no? let's appreciate the, the gift of God in her life. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. As we go into the word today, please welcome Pastor Bajo Akisoya. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like you to come with me today on a journey. And so come with me, please, to a very busy train station, a train station that would fit in any part of the world. It's the rush hour. And what you realize with rush hour is people move in waves and literally seas of heads. But come with me on this day, we're going through that crowd and we're going to a very significant platform. We're going to platform seven. The crowds of people, all of them going into the city. Platform seven is the platform that you find that everybody who's really busy or in a rush goes to. 7.15 becomes 7.20, 7.20 becomes 7.25. And at 7.25, the fast train into the city arrives. It's one of the long ones, all the doors open, and a lot of people get off, but a load of people get on. Everybody seems to find a seat, understand where they are in the carriage. They've done this before. They pile in to the train, and as the doors close, it sets us up for our journey this morning. For on the platform are five people, all of whom don't seem to be in that kind of rush. As the train pulls out, none of them panic. They didn't come together. They arrived separately, so they are spread down the platform. As the train pulls into the distance, we realize they must be there waiting for a specific train. And those are our five players. Let me introduce them to you one after the other. The first lady has been on a journey. She stands with her hands in her pockets and her eyes to the ground. She doesn't really look up. She doesn't look at anybody around you. Her makeup is really great. It's done very well. But if you look a little bit closer, you could see the lines of a journey, the lines of tiredness, the lines of trouble etched on her forehead. Every now and again, she pulls her coat closer around her. It's like her shield. It's her defense. She stands very still. She doesn't look up. Only once do we see her move. She pulls her hand out of her, po of her pocket. In her hand is a white piece of paper. She folds it into two and puts her hands back in her pocket and her routine is done. She stands there almost defiantly away from everybody else. The second person on the platform, ladies and gentlemen, is different. He stands ramrod straight. He stands confidently. 
Everything about him matches. Everything about him says success. Watch matching cufflinks, cufflinks matching shoes, shoes matching ties. He looks successful. He holds in his hand a broadsheet folded to the pages that speak of those that have wealth. But if you look closer, in his hand, where the newspaper is, is a mobile phone. He doesn't put it away. It is one of the latest ones. So you would assume that he's doing something that's making him any more money. He looks at it every now and again, and then all of a sudden, out of the newspaper, he takes a white piece of paper. He folds it into two deftly, puts it in his inside pocket, and holds onto the mobile phone and stands there looking at it. He does not necessarily look like somebody who's suffering. He deserves to be there. The third person is... A little different she is what you would call the female form of the second man everything matches it she is there for business her bag speaks volumes it carries the weight of wealth it wasn't a cheap one and she stands with the confidence of I know why I'm here her phone on the other hand is our point of reference she doesn't hold a piece of paper in her hands just a mobile phone and her mobile phone rings beeps and twitches in time with the clock on the wall it is busy she speaks a lot short sentences sometimes her tone and even her accent belie the fact that she's speaking to recruiters and people that would ask her to do things for lots of money every now and again a rate is mentioned and she keeps talking in between that conversation, things are asked of her, and her answers tell you that the conversation changes. Yes, I can make it to Turin on Thursday. Yes, I can do America in December. Yes, I can. She is busy. And the one thing about her that stands out is she never stands still. Even though she's waiting for a train, she turns repetitive half circles. She's restless. Lady number four. Lady number four is out of place. There's nothing wrong with her outfit. It's just two seasons back. There's nothing wrong with her makeup or her hair. It is styled well. But it is styled by somebody who hasn't spent much time doing this recently, but it's well done. Her makeup is adequate. She is different in that in her ears remain permanently earphones. Every now and again, she will look at her mobile phone and she'll tap it. A smile will come to her face and in her other hand is a piece of paper that she looks at time and time again. She never puts it down. Player number five stands away from all four of them. He stands as the kind of person who knows where the doors will open on a train that isn't there yet. His coat is nondescript yet quality. He wears a hat and that hides his eyes. His hair is silver and the lines on his face are either those of laughter or age. He holds in his hand a newspaper, but it's not being read right now. It's folded almost like a weapon. But there is one thing about him. He keeps looking at his watch, not feverishly, just every now and again and so our players are laid out they are there waiting for a train and there ladies and gentlemen our story begins the tannoy interrupts their routines across the tannoy comes a tinny voice a voice that says that i would rather be flying an airplane rather than working in a train station can everybody who's waiting for the 735, 
Just wanted you to know, ladies and gentlemen, your train is delayed. We're not sure when it will arrive, but it will get here soon, says the voice. The voice is unfeeling. It doesn't seem to care what routine. It's destroyed. And the voice says, stay on the platform. And silence. The old man looks at his watch. The fourth lady taps her phone. The third lady shuffles and answers her phone incessantly. The second man takes one step backwards and then stands ramrod straight. He is not phased. He obviously has done this before. But then we come to the first lady. Her hands seem to go deeper into her pockets. And if you look closely, you'll realize they're bunched into fists. Her head sinks further down. 7.35 becomes 7.40. 7.40 becomes 7.42. And then the outburst comes. I knew they would do this, she says. She doesn't necessarily speak to anyone. She doesn't really care whether anybody is listening. But the outburst comes. Her face now rises and you see it bright red. Anger in her eyes flash and she says, I said they couldn't be trusted. Then she goes on with a soliloquy that doesn't have anybody in focus, but everybody can hear her. I've worked for these people for 15 years. 15 years I've worked for the train company. 15 years, and then I get an email and my job is gone. And then all they send me is this. She pulls out a piece of paper in her hands. I knew they couldn't be trusted. I knew that things would go wrong. She storms towards the exit, screwing up the piece of paper in the process. She throws it into the bin. It misses, and she doesn't care. She's angry. I knew this would happen, she says, and storms off. And then they were full. 7.42 becomes 7.45. 7.45 becomes 7.50. 7.50 becomes 7.55. And the weight seems to be interminable. And then the third lady shuffles. But then she, her phone has gone silent. So she walks away from where she is because she has to be doing something. She walks to the chocolate machine. She doesn't really want to buy anything. She walks back and then back to the chocolate machine. And she doesn't really care who she bumps into. She's that kind of person. But the second man is our focus. Because when the lady moves away from where she's standing, the fourth lady, the lady from the carpool, the lady with the earphones, is now standing next to the second gentleman. His voice is almost a whisper. His body language has changed a bit. His shoulders are slightly lower. This has happened before, he whispers. But the fourth lady obviously has spent time with children because she hears and realizes you need a conversation. Etiquette, platform etiquette is not her problem yet. She hasn't been here for a while. She turns to the man and says, pardon, what did you say? She doesn't say it angrily. She says it kindly and her kindness seems to touch something in him and he begins to speak. By now, if you noticed, his demeanor has changed. His eyes are wide open. The essence of success is gone. He's a trembling man. I was here. This is where I was. It's almost the same thing that happened before. I was on a platform like this, and then this comes, and he pushes his mobile phone under her nose. She realizes that he's not looking at stocks and shares. He's looking at a text message that has come a long time time ago. I had the ring. We had an agreement. I was going to ask her to marry me and all of a sudden I get this. He doesn't say it with anger. He says it in pain. 
Now he's talking not to the lady, he's talking almost to himself. I've been here before, he says. By now, the newspaper has fallen. He turns round, looks at her, thank you for listening, he says. His eyes are beginning to glisten. He turns away to protect a vestige of male pride. He takes his hand, puts it into his expensive jacket, draws out the pristine letter that looks so well folded. As he walks past the dustbin theatrically, he lets it go. As he gets halfway up the walkway, the woman realizes he's crying. But he walks away. Then they were three. At that point in time, the old man looks at his watch and somebody appears from round the corner. Are you waiting for the 7.35? The person says. Well, please go to platform 7A. Platform 7A is where your train will come. Now, platform 7A, ladies and gentlemen, isn't too far away. It's just up into the concourse, around a corner and down. They begin to go to platform 7A. They go almost as a fellowship. They keep going. The lady who is shuffling, the lady who can't stay still stops at the chocolate machine on the way to the platform she has to have something to do she buys a bar of chocolate and she keeps going she actually leads them to platform 7a she gets there all three of them get there and their routines begin she shuffles nervously because nobody is calling her phone the other lady taps her phone looks at the piece of paper and smiles the old man stands, looks at his watch, expressionless. Out of nowhere comes a man the size of a house in a platform inspector's uniform. He doesn't threaten anybody. He speaks from where he is. He looks in nobody's direction, but he has a voice that used to command a battalion. He's that kind of person. Anybody waiting for the 735? Well, things have changed, he says in his best voice. You now have to go to platform 1A. Platform 1A is where your train will go from. He clicks his heels together and turns. He's obviously used to being on a parade ground. He marches out of our story. And the three begin to make their way to platform 1A. Now, for those of you that would know the station, Platform 1A is on the other side of the international rails platforms. That means to get to Platform 1A, you have to go through a horde of tourists who don't care about your schedule. Platform 1A is the platform that the designers seem to have forgotten. It is the nightmare platform. There are no covers. It's all, all on its own. It's the oldest platform. They get to the concourse and the third lady explodes. I didn't want to take the train anyway. I drive a ZX. I am not poor. I could have been there. We could have done this meeting by Skype. I'm not the kind of person that they deal with. She throws open her expensive bag. Her hand is thrust in. Out comes a piece of paper. She screws it up with the wrapper of the bar of chocolate. She bites into the bar of chocolate with a level of anger that is rarely seen. I didn't want to be here and I'm not a poor person. I don't need the job. I've got other things to do. If I had known, I would have driven. And she storms away. On her way past the nearest dustbin, her shoes making a noise louder than necessary. She throws away the bar of chocolate and the piece of paper. She doesn't stop. Her phone is back in her hand, now glued to her head. She begins to call those who probably called her before. She's angry and she leaves. And then there were two. 
In between platform 7A and platform 1A, nothing really eventful happens. They had to swerve round tourists, they had to swerve round children. They finally get to platform 1A. They're standing side by side, and lo and behold, the train is there. The doors open and it's a short one, a very short train. All the seats are filled except for two. And those two are facing each other. Now the lady with the earphones is facing the old man. She looks at him and realizes he's got a kind face. She pulls her phone out of her bag because now she's seated. As she does so, her screensaver pops up with a man and two children clowning around on it. The old man can't resist. Are those your family, he says. Yes, she says. I've been out of work having these two children. This is my first interview for a long time. I got the email and she opens her hand and shows him the email as if I want you to see. And then she says, I really want this job. And then they go back to their routines. She taps her phone and the smile comes and the old man says, why are you smiling? Oh, she says, my family recorded an encouraging message for me this morning. And so every single time I get nervous, I just tap the phone and the message plays and it brings a smile to my face. My children are clowning around at the end of it and so I really enjoy it. It's a great memory. I am very nervous and she wants to continue, but the man goes to his paper, almost disinterested. The rest of the journey is uneventful. She puts her earphones back in. They arrive in the city in almost record time. She stands up and as happens many times in the morning, she turns to her newfound companion and he's gone. He hasn't disappeared, he's just five or six people away from her. And these people know where they're going and they're in a hurry. She tries to say thank you for listening, but he's gone. Out through the gates and into the city goes this crowd of people. And as, every, as they pass every office, as they pass every building, every shop, the crowd gets smaller. She turns her last corner and she's standing in front of a huge glass building. She's finally got there. She walks in, not with confidence, but with slight trepidation. And the receptionist says, oh, good morning. Are you here for the interview? Yes, she says, pulling one earphone out of her ear. I am here for the interview. And the lady says, okay, please sit over there. And she sits in a place where there are four chairs. She only fills one. Almost immediately, a lady comes out who is dressed very professionally. The lady is very interesting. She's not nondescript. She's just businesslike. Are you here for the interview? She says, come with me. And all of a sudden, the journey begins into an office. She goes down a corridor into an office, and she's seated in front of a desk. But there's nobody behind the desk. Please wait here, she says, and turns round. As the door closes, another door opens, and in walks... A man. The woman hasn't had time to work out where she is. And so as she puts away her earphones and her phone, she looks up and what she notices as the man sits down, that on the table there is a hat and a newspaper. She looks up sharply and realizes she's sitting in front of the old man. Have you done your reading, he says. She says yes, and, and she begins to reel off all the things she's learnt about the company from the interview. The man interrupts her. By the way, do you realize our latest purchase? She looks a bit bemused. Don't worry, I'll tell you, because it's a new one. It's actually my favorite one. We just bought the train company. The woman doesn't really say much, and then the man's face changes. He's now like a child who at Christmas desperately wants to tell a sibling about the surprise he was sworn to secrecy about. His eyes glisten and he can't hold himself back. He puts down the papers and looks her in the eye and says, you've got the job. What do you mean I've got the job, she says. No, 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 you've got the job. 
Now she's shocked. As he says it, another man walks in. He is official, tall, slim, dark, puts a piece of paper on the, puts a folder on the table, opens it, and points to two pieces of paper, sign here and sign here. She signs simply because she has to. She signs, says, oh, by the way, that's your contract. Have a look at the last line, the man says. By now, he's really enjoying himself. She looks at the last line and realizes they're offering her a salary that will solve their financial problems forever. Way beyond what she expected. And he smiles. Have you had a look at paragraph 7? He says, by now he's obviously enjoying himself. Paragraph 7 is a paragraph about educational benefits. And then she realizes that almost exactly to the age of her children, there is an educational supplement that goes with the job she's being offered that will settle all her children's educational needs for the rest of their life. Now, she's panicking. She flips the folder to the beginning and says, this is not the job I applied for. He says, no, it's not. By the way, you can work anywhere in our company you want. You're hired. I'll see you on Monday. He stands up really quickly and he says, oh, by the way, when you get on the train, here. And he hands her an envelope, handwritten. She's ushered out of the office. She's in her days. The receptionist says, welcome to the team. She's now outside the building, almost like she's walking on air. She feels like, wait a minute, am I dreaming? She finds her way to the station, almost as somebody who is drunk. She gets onto her train home. She cannot believe what has happened. She then decides that, let me listen to the message one more time. Her hand goes into her bag. Bringing out her phone, out comes the envelope. She had forgotten about it in her days. She tears it open, not so much in a rush, but thinking that, what, how did he know? What, why? I didn't know he knew my name. The envelope opens. And there's a handwritten note and a check which is obviously not a company check but one from the boss himself and it says by the way pay all your debts and she looks at the check he said we have done our research as well and there is a check for the exact amount of all that her and her husband owe and there is a P.S. P.S. Don't get the 8.35 again. And there, ladies and gentlemen, ends the story. And you may say, well, Pastor, that's, that was a wonderful story. That isn't, no, 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 no. Oh. Now, some of you are clapping, thinking, that, whoa, whoa, that was a great story, well told. Not. But this is the deal. Now come with me 2,000 years ago. Jesus is now sitting on a boat as he steps off the boat through a crowd just like you. He goes to a house and his disciples ask the questions that you're thinking of. Explain that parable to us. Because now, ladies and gentlemen, you are in Mark 4. But you are not at the beginning, you're in the middle. For you have just heard the parable of the sower. And so, let me now flow with Jesus to explain what you heard. The first thing is, did you notice all of the people had a white piece of paper? All of them had the same email. Every single one was invited to the same interview. That means the boss who represents God. Why? The Bible says that the sower sows the word. God will give you his promises to fill the gap of his presence. That means while you are walking with him, you will have something to remind you of what he has promised you. He sent the email to them, but all of them out of four, only one got to the interview. Please remember, hear me well, ladies and gentlemen. 
Today my job is simple. God has only sent me here to remind you that I am faithful. God has no benefit in lying to you. Second, the Bible says this. Notice the old man said to the woman, he said, you can work anywhere in our company. Why? In the parable of the sower, Jesus said the following. If you can understand this parable, then every other parable that speaks of the kingdom of God, you will understand. Ladies and gentlemen, please understand, whenever God wants to transfer something to you, he will always give you a word, a promise, or an assurance, or in this case, an email. So let's go through the players. Notice, player number one, Listen to her words. She said, I've worked for these people for 15 years. I know them. I don't trust them anymore. Hear me well. The Bible says that when somebody doesn't understand the promise of God, that Satan comes and steals it. The one sin that he uses is primarily is unbelief. He will, based on your circumstances, try and tell you that God is not faithful. That is not true. Ladies and gentlemen, please be clear. The Bible says that God established the earth and he stretched out the heavens and they are here till today. The sun rises as it, at his command. This is God Almighty we are talking about. Ladies and gentlemen, if you would like a reference before I move on, Genesis chapter 18 verse 14. The Lord says, now God is speaking to someone directly. He says, is there there anything too hard for the Lord and the answer is no there is nothing you are facing that God cannot handle let's go to person number two person number two as Jesus laid them out the, notice what happened to him because of the delay pressure began to build and pressure brought a memory a memory brought an emotion and an emotion brought an assumption an assumption brought an action ladies and gentlemen the bible says this now please remember in the parable of the sower the bible says persecution and affliction will only arise for the word's sake none of them would have been on the platform if they had not got the email do we agree you would not be on your journey if god had not said you were going to wake up this morning let me clarify you wouldn't have made it through your past you wouldn't have made it through your trouble if god had not said on this particular day of 2018 you would be here you must understand without God saying that you would make it this far through this year you wouldn't have made it across the road meaning he's got this process in his hand he has got you the man remembered a yesterday that was over. He made an assumption. He added two and two and got seven. You must understand the God you trust and have trusted thus far is faithful. He walked away because of a yesterday that didn't exist anymore. Number three, the lady who was busy is interesting. She never took out the piece of paper. She knew why she was there. She was on it. She was focused. The Bible says that the third type of ground, which is thorny, the Bible says the word actually gets in. It plants itself. It begins to grow, but then thorns grow with it. What kind of thorns? The cares of this world the deceitfulness of riches and the lusts of other things get in that means it gets in what am i talking about distractions become reality rather than go for one job you make an assumption because there are many options i can disregard this one 
a distraction means they know where you're meant to be and they pull something to make you go sideways the bible says clearly that this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth why so that you may be able to observe to do according to all that is in it what will happen then God will make your way prosperous and you shall have good success it's all about focus let me say this here and let me tie this into what pastor doc said earlier faith is not magic faith becomes strong when you focus on the speaker not on your circumstances when god is your focus then the words you say to yourself even in a challenge will govern your actions why did the fourth lady stay she read the email time and time and time and time and time time again if you skip with me to mark 5 the woman with the issue of blood said to herself ad infinitum if i can but touch his garment i will be healed and it caused her to find jesus god will not let you down number four and then we have some fun the fourth lady didn't really deserve to be there. She had come through a challenge. You must realize, notice, she had something in her ears and she had something in front of her eyes. Jesus says that the word must stay before your eyes and it must go into your ears. Then it changes your heart when it changes your heart we call that belief where do we see that in mark 11 22 23 and 24 the bible says have faith in god but then jesus expands and he says faith is articulate if any man says to this mountain be thou lifted up and be cast into the sea and shall not does not doubt in his heart but believes that those things which he says shall come to pass he shall have whatsoever he says therefore whatsoever things you desire when you pray believe you receive them and you shall what have them hear me well she worked her faith she read it and she said it and the bible says her heart stayed on god's focus the result was amazing please before i close let me say this to you the god who said that this is your seventh season meant it the god who said that god will do what he said forget the former things what does he say that yesterday is done he said focus on me and then he said what i will make a way in the wilderness i will give you rivers in the desert he says behold i will do a new thing yesterday will be wiped out by the new hear my words this morning i only came to remind you to hold on that hold on to the god who promised why the bible says he has no benefit fit in lying to you and he says i can handle it by the time she got there notice all she had to do was arrive and then the man took over and this is somebody's word please hear me when we say it will rain let me close on this and then i'm going to ask you to pray Notice, by the time she got to the office, the man, the old man took over. He had the job prepared. He knew what she owed. He knew where she was going. He told her, you can have any job in our company. 
That's interesting. Hear me well. Notice what he said. Number one, he gave her a better job than she expected. Number two, within that job, the needs that she thought that she did not even realize she had or that she had not told the man, the man had found out. Let me say this here before I go on. Before you call, God will answer. You must understand that God hear me well Matthew 6 verse 8 says before you pray your father knows exactly what you have need of is that in your Bible now let's understand it began to rain on that woman not only did God meet her needs not only did God sort out tomorrow but God then said you know what I'm going to make sure that generosity is easy for you and all she did was catch a train. So we come to a moment and rain is about to happen. Nahum chapter 1, verse 7. The Bible says the following, The Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble, and he knoweth them that trust him. But with an overrunning flood will he make an utter end of the place thereof, and the darkness shall pursue his enemies. What do you imagine against the Lord? He will make an utter end. Affliction shall not arise a second time what am i saying floods come with rain and when god rains he's going to give you exceedingly abundantly above whatsoever you have asked or thought that's the god we are talking about and notice he said come and pick a spot because you are going to be somebody else's miracle what was my job this morning god is not panicked that this is July. He knows what he has promised you. Hold on to that God. Hear me well. It took one moment of time for her to get on a train and everything changed from that day forward. You are going to walk into your moment and everything will change based on that. What was my job this morning? To present a God to you that can be trusted. Notice last thing and then if you want to celebrate feel free jeremiah 1 verse 12 the bible says that god watches over his word to perform it what does that mean the god who gave them the email was on the journey with them last point and this is it the man said this he said we just bought the train company your circumstances have been designed to make sure you succeed. God said, give me the good, give me the bad, give me the ugly, and I will make sure that good will come out of it. Ladies and gentlemen, stand to your feet, if you please. I want you just to talk to that God, that this is not the end of my matter. I have just arrived. I may have come to a turning point. There may have been a delay, but things will change on my behalf. If that's you, go ahead and pray. But there's one group of people that God wants to work with. There are some of you saying that, Pastor, I don't even have the strength to pray. I don't have the ability to go on. I would like to pretend, but I'm not there. That, Pastor, I'm running on empty. God said, I've got you. I've got you. What is he saying? He says, I'll be your strength. I will not only do it, but I will do it through you. If that's you, just lift your, place your hand on your chest. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to lift your voice in prayer. And I want you to pray any way you can that God, if that's me and I can't go on, then do it through me. 
do it through me. Place the faith, the confidence in my heart until I can walk. Carry me, carry me. Today, strength will come from nowhere. It will come from the almighty God and it will fill you on the inside. Eternal rock of ages. And so, my Father, we come to the end. We ask, O oh Lord, that your word that never, ever, ever, ever fails keeps your people now and forever. And we ask it in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And everybody said? And everybody said? Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, God bless you. Oh God. Do you know, as Pastor Baj spoke, I, I thought, how many people have missed the train just because they couldn't wait or because the platform was changed or because the time was extended but ladies and gentlemen can you please let me tell somebody again don't give up on God because God will not give up on you he will do whatever it is that is necessary to ensure even if you miss the train you'll catch another train that will take you to the place of his promise please help me tell somebody again please don't give up on God because God will not give up on you. Oh. Exceedingly, oh. abundantly, far above all. All we could ask or think, according to the past. We bless you. We worship your God. What a faithful God you are. 
What an awesome God you are. Lord, your word says that your faithfulness it reaches up to the clouds, O oh God. Father, this afternoon we hear your word, O oh God, by your spirit. And for those of us that have given up on you, that have stopped trusting in you, please forgive us, O oh God. But Lord, by your spirit, help us to refocus on you, O oh Lord and God. Caused by your spirit, everlasting Father, new faith and fervor in you, O oh God. Knowing that you are a God who is forever faithful. We give you all the glory, everlasting Father. And Lord, by reason of your word this afternoon, we declare, because you have said it, your rain will fall upon our lives. Every dry place will receive your rain, O oh God, to the glory of your name. Blessed be your holy name, O oh God. In Jesus' name we have worshipped. Amen. Go on, let's give God a clap offering. <laughs> Hallelujah. And can we bless God for the gift in Pastor Badger's life for that message? God bless you. God bless you. Badger, you've become a, Badger, you've become a storyteller now. That's a new anointing. We are grateful to God. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated in God's wonderful presence. We want to honor God with our tithes and with our offering. He is worthy of our worship, a faithful God, a kind, generous, and loving God. And as we prepare our offering, let's just be blessed by the ministration of the choir. Hallelujah. God's love is faithful. He rejoices over us with singing. And we are grateful that we are loved by a good father. Anybody grateful here? Oh, before I spoke a word, you were singing over me. You have been so, so good to me. Before I took a breath, you breathed your life to me. You have been so, so kind to me. And all the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God oh it chases me down fights till I'm found leaves a nine to nine and I don't deserve it and I don't deserve it still you give yourself away oh the overwhelming never ending reckless love of God oh, oh. Lord, we are grateful. Come on, church, rise as we sing the song. Thank you, Lord, for your love that never runs out, oh God, that keeps going on and on, oh God. Sing, when I was your foe, when I was your foe, still your love fought for me. Oh, you have been so good, Lord. You have been so, so good to me. When I felt no worth, oh God, when I felt no worth, you paid it all for me. You've been so kind, you have been so, so kind to me. Oh, 
There's no shadow he wouldn't light up. There's no mountain he wouldn't climb up. Coming after us. There's no wall he wouldn't kick down. There's no lie he wouldn't tear down. Coming after us. There's no shadow you wouldn't light up. Mountain you wouldn't climb up. Coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. Come and help me sing. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall, there's no wall you won't tear down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, no shadow you won't light up, mountain, mountain you won't climb up. Coming after me, after me. There's no wall you wouldn't kick down. And I couldn't earn it, I don't deserve it Still you give yourself away Only overwhelming, never-ending Reckless love of God Hallelujah Only overwhelming Hallelujah You know, I, 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 said, I said in the first service that those words are so profound ladies and gentlemen he says that there's no shadow that God will not light up there's no mountain he will not climb just to chase after you he says there's no wall he will not knock down no lie that he won't tear down just to chase after you what awesome love the father has for you and I can somebody appreciate a loving God a loving God, a loving God. There's nothing He will not do for you, my brother, my sister. There's no height that He will not climb just for you, my brother, my sister. Someone needs to understand how much God loves you. Oh God, we bless you. We bless you. Thank you, Father. The psalmist says, what manner of love is this? And who is man that you're mindful of him? The son of man that you care so much for us, O oh God. Father, this afternoon, with one heart, we just want to say thank you for loving us. Loving us more than we can imagine, O oh God. Through your unfailing love, we're assured that your plans and purposes for every single life will come to pass. But Father, by your spirit help us to love you in return oh god help us to continue to focus on you oh god we give you honor and glory be glorified in every life in this place oh god in Jesus' name we have prayed amen one more time ladies and gentlemen a resounding clap offering to our god and can you please appreciate the tribe Thank you so much, guys. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah.
You may be seated in God's wonderful presence. As we bring the service to a close, a few announcements, please, to pay attention to. Um, I was saying that one of the critical expectations of God is that once we cross that threshold of salvation where we come into a relationship with Him, we give our lives to Him. God expects every single one of us to grow in our Christian walk, to grow in maturity, to grow in wisdom as we navigate the, the, the paths of life. And one of the tools that He has given us, ladies and gentlemen, which unfortunately t we, haven't, we, we, we haven't paid particular attention to, as the tool of mentoring. You know, mentoring is something that Jesus himself exemplified when he brought his disciples together, walked life with them to enable them to walk by themselves, and they in turn mentored others. And we want to encourage every single person, as a Christian, you must not walk alone. The whole idea of mentoring is that you come alongside somebody or somebody comes alongside you to walk the journey of life with you. You're not making the mistakes, uh, 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 sorry, somebody is not making the mistakes that you made. You're helping to guide somebody along life. And I could go on and on. And so we want to challenge ourselves to ensure that every single person has a mentor. Somebody's mentoring you. And then guess what? You're also mentoring somebody. You know, I was saying to them in, in one of the classes yesterday, one of the mentoring classes, that, that the, the beauty of the mentor-mentee relationship is that both grow. Both mentor and mentee are growing as you do life together. So we want to encourage ourselves in, in, in taking advantage of this godly tool that God has given us. Now, the ladies are, are, are many years ahead of the rest of us in a sense because the, the, the ladies started the Esther's Mentoring Scheme about 10 years ago. I gather it's going to be 10 years come January next year. And in the nine plus years, countless ladies in this church I know have been through the mentoring scheme and their lives have been changed for, for the better. A lot of people have, be, have tran, trans, trans um, what's trans, is it? Moved from being mentees to mentoring others as well. And that's what we're calling every single person to do. So please, if you're a lady in this church and you haven't gone through the EMS, the Esther's mentoring scheme, please take advantage of it. The next uh, class, the next series will start on the 18th of September, and it's something you want to register for. You know what? Don't take my word for it. Look for someone who has been through the mentoring scheme and ask them what their experience has been, and that should challenge you or encourage you to be a part of this. Now, in the same vein, we wanted to encourage the men. A lady was saying to me yesterday that men need more mentoring than women. I don't know whether it's true. All I know is that as men, we need, men, we need to be mentored as well. And so as men, we want to challenge ourselves to either get a mentor or mentor somebody. Now, the good news, gentlemen, is that the men's mentoring scheme will be kicking off in September this year as well. So we're going to start our... We're, we're going to start our, the, 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 the men's mentoring scheme come September. We'll talk about that as the weeks come by. But please, let's look forward to it. The whole idea is, you know, come, be challenged, get somebody to walk alongside you, and then you grow as well and become a mentor. I, I heard after the first service that one of our friends who was over 50 um, was, was, was joking with one of, his, one, of, one of our friends and said that he needs a mentor. And the lady friend said, at over 50, who, who is going to mentor you? But ladies and gentlemen, everybody needs a mentor, regardless of age. And then, like I said, the challenge is that you're not just being mentored, but you're also mentoring other people. Now, talking about mentoring as a tool, our Tight Knots ministry, that's our marriage ministry, also want to take advantage of this tool to help our marriages. What they're saying is that there are older couples who have been married for, for a number of years, who can come alongside younger couples and mentor them in their marriage journey. The mistakes we made earlier on, you don't have any business making if you have people that are mentoring you. So the call 
this afternoon is for married couples who have been married for a, a fair number of years, 5, 6, 10, 15, 20 years. If you'd like to mentor a younger couple, those who are particularly new, newly married or, or young in marriage, we'd like you to please join us in this mentoring scheme for, for married couples. We have um, a training sem seminar on Saturday, this Saturday, the 28th of July at 5 p.m. here in the chapel. Um, and uh, we'd like you to just come alongside. What we want to do on that day is just start to train ourselves in how to mentor a younger couple. So please, if you're interested, and we hope that there'll be many that'll be interested in supporting younger couples, please send an email to tightknots at jesushouse.org.uk and look forward to seeing you this Saturday. And then um, amongst the many activities that will be taking place over the summer period, uh, summer usually is busy, but it's a time for us to engage ourselves in meaningful activity. Um, one of the activities that we would like to present to the church is that the RCCG Music Academy, that's the denomination we belong to, the Music Academy, which incidentally is run by one of us, um, Ariola Natwanya, who you all know, um, we're offering a two-day sum music summer camp for the Saturday 4th of August and Saturday 11th of August. And it's for younger children between the ages of 7 and 12 who would like to spend the day in musical activities and training and engaging activities. Um, a lot of the things that will take place on the day include, include training in singing, training in dancing, songwriting, and even in studio techniques, even at that young age. So if you have any children between the ages of 7 and 12, you want to to, to uh, what's the word? You want to pour into them in this manner. You want them to, to be engaged in these activities. Please register as quickly as you can because there are limited spaces. There should be a registration link on the screen, rccguk.eventbrite.uk, because spaces are limited. Now, as you can imagine, each day will be paid for but the fees that you're paying will go towards lunch for your child, um, as well as the camp t-shirt and all the materials that will be required for each one of the days of training. I gather the classes will be run by professional theater arts company who work with children in the West End. So it, it's something to look forward to. So please register your children for either of those days or both days as you wish. And then we wanted to continue to remind our men folk to please look forward to our men's conference, 6th to 8th of September. You've heard some of, and seen some of the adverts. The theme for this year is commissioned. So please look forward to that as we continue to uh, develop ourselves and sharpen ourselves as men and becoming the godly men God has created. Please register early. That's why we keep, we, we've been announcing um, th th this early, as we look forward to a wonderful men's conference. And then also for the men, to remind you that our monthly men's meeting will be taking place this Thursday, the 26th of July, 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. Now, this one I would particularly recommend to you because Pastor Badger will be taking this men's meeting and he's going to be talking about discovering purpose. Why I say that I particularly recommend it is that he took this session during our, oh, sorry, I forgot to mention, we, we've had a pilot study of our men's mentoring scheme. We actually had a pilot, pilot period for about um, seven weeks before rolling, rolling out um, it to, to the congregation which will be starting in September. During our pilot mentoring scheme, he took one of the sessions and talked about discovering purpose. Absolutely mind-blowing. I think it's something that every gentleman should look forward to as it challenges us in our journey of discovering purpose. So please look forward to this Thursday's meeting, Thursday 26 from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. Um, here at Jesus House. And then lastly, our healthcare team would like to 
bring to our attention, as most of you know, every year um, we go on a mission trip to disadvantaged areas of the world just to provide free medical care as we, uh, as we lend ourselves to those who are disadvantaged, those who are impoverished. And this year's trip will be taking place from the 27th of October to the 3rd of November. Um, this year, we've chosen to go to one of the states in the, in the western part of Nigeria. We've identified some um, disadvantaged areas there where we'll be ministering to. And as we always do, we'd like to invite as many people as possible to join us on these life-changing missionary trips. They really make a difference as we touch people's lives. But please note that it's for both medical and non-medical staff. Sorry, volunteers, I beg your pardon. So you don't have to be medical. Um, if you're medical, you're welcome to join on the mission trip. So we're looking for dentists, op dentists, op optometrists, pharmacists, doctors, nurses, midwives, um, administrative support, non-clinical um, support. So whoever is interested in coming along to change your life, please put down your names. Um, either at the front of house desk or please email Bridget at olorogumbi at jesushouse.org.uk. We'll probably talk a bit more about this as time goes on, but please let's put down our names as quickly as possible. Amen. Praise the Lord. We would like to acknowledge the presence of those who are worshipping with us for the first time. We don't take your coming to worship with us for granted. So if it's your first time ever uh, worshiping here, can I ask you to just wave at me if it's your first time? We want to recognize your presence. God bless you. I, I can see quite a number of hands. Go on, Jesus House, let's celebrate our new guest. Okay. Now, if it's your first time, if you just keep waving until somebody comes to you, uh, a member of our hospitality team will come to you and then escort you out to our hospitality room. We've got an informal reception just to thank you for coming to be with us. Jesus House, let's encourage them. Thank you so much for coming to be with us. Um, just a point of correction, please. Um, for those who want to volunteer for the mission trip, the email um, there's a slight typo. It's Olorogun B. There's no I at the end of the B. But if you didn't take it down, just go out to the front of house desk and, and say you'd like to put down your name for the mission trip. Hallelujah. Let's rise up to our feet. How many people are encouraged today by the word? You've renewed your trust and your hope and your focus in God because God will never let you down. Now, as we end the service, my question is, if there's one thing, whether a word or a phrase, that you'd like to say to somebody today before you go, what would it be? What word would, would it be? Just a word or phrase that you'd like to say to encourage somebody. What would it be? Now, can you turn to somebody and tell them that, you know, just, just say something, a word or a phrase. Say something to someone tonight to encourage them. Just say something to someone today. Just say something to somebody. Don't, don't, don't just stand by yourself. Encourage someone with a word. Whatever it is you heard today that you want to say to someone, go on, go on. Go on, say something to someone. Say something. I can see people standing, not talking to anyone. Encourage somebody so that you too will be encouraged. Say a word to someone today, my brother, my sister. Go on, say something to somebody. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. But guess what? Guess what? My own phrase for you, ladies and gentlemen, is simple. Don't give up on God because God will not give up on you. Can you help me tell somebody before you go? Just tell them one more time. God bless you and have a wonderful week. And may you see God move in your life like never before. Amen.